Give me a D. Give me an A. Give me a T. Give me an A. What does that spell? Actionable insights. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Sure, you've got yourself a haystack of data. Now let's discuss finding that needle and then knitting a sweater. Yeah, right. How much time do you have to sort, resort, and then understand the grandiose volume of data thrown at you every day? Maybe you've tried adding more test methods, more big data experts, and even more staff to help you, but you're still drowning in data and no sweater in sight. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this third episode of this Chalk Talk series about Synopsys' Silicon Lifecycle Management Platform, we're going to help you finally get something done with that growing haystack of data. Mark Laird joins me to discuss how Yield Explorer and Silicon Dash can help you gain valuable insights into your data in way less time than ever before. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Synopsys. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia. I'm really excited to be here. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about silicon lifecycle analytics today. But Mark, this ultimately has to do with data and turning that data into valuable insight, right? Yeah, that's right, Amelia. We're seeing the same pattern repeated at our customers. So they spend a lot of time and money to extend their test programs, and then they staff up their yield product and reliability teams. They bring in big data and machine learning experts, and they bring in extra software. And after all this time and expense, they're still not getting the full value from their data. And the reality is that most of an engineer's time is spent collecting and aligning data. And so the data is so expansive and complex that only around 10% of it's ever used. And so what we see from our customers is they struggle to turn their data into actions. That makes sense. Now, Mark, before we go any further, can we talk about the Silicon Lifecycle Management Platform a bit? What are we really talking about here? Yeah, so Synopsys' Silicon Lifecycle Management Platform, or what we refer to as SLM, is how we're solving the problem of turning this diverse, high-volume data into information. So with SLM, we can load data from the design stage through manufacturing and test, and finally pull in in in-field test data into a single platform that structures and aligns your data for easy and fast analysis. So, Mark, in two previous Chalk Talks, we've explored SLM, but today we're diving a bit deeper into Yield Explorer and Silicon Dash, correct? How do they fit into the overall ecosystem? Sure. So here we see the various pieces of SLM. And the tools in the light blue are available today. So this includes both Yield Explorer and Silicon Dash. And Yield Explorer and Silicon Dash combine to form the silicon lifecycle analytics piece of SLM. So these two tools together let engineers explore data in a meaningful way using various methods to find actionable information from test data throughout the design timeline. Okay, so Mark, how do Yield Explorer and Silicon Dash fit into our design timeline? Yeah, so both Yield Explorer and Silicon Dash are used from the beginning of new product introduction, then through Yield Ramp, and then finally into the high volume sustaining. But you can see from this graphic that both the value and usage of the two tools change over time. So Yield Explorer is the more design-centric and flexible tool. It really excels when you have a self-contained specific data set that you want to deep dive. And like it says in the name, it's meant for exploration of test data. And a major feature that makes Yield Explorer different from other tools in the market is that it can ingest scan logic diagnostics data for failure root cause analysis. Silicon Dash, on the other hand, really shines with high volume production data. So Silicon Dash puts yield reporting and analytics at your fingertips so that you can move through the data quickly. It looks at 100% of your incoming data and it brings yield opportunities to your attention through what we call our insights feature. And in addition to the reporting and analytics pieces, Silicon Dash also has automated production control. So for example, you might want to automatically apply some DPAT and then even a cluster inking algorithm to every single incoming wafer for a product. And after inking the die, you want to send a new build map to assembly. So Silicon Dash can do all of this for you in a fully automated manner. 
Okay, so Mark, can we get into the details of Yield Explorer? What kind of diagnostics are we really talking about here? Yeah, this is a really big topic, but when we're talking about diagnostics, we're talking about additional information from either scan ATPG or BIS testing. And this diagnostics information can tell you specifically where a failure occurs in a circuit or even in the layout. So in Yield Explorer, we take this diagnostics reports and we perform statistical analysis to turn this data into information. And as an example, we can see this Pareto here on the right. So this is a Pareto for scan diagnostics data. And what we're trying to do is find a specific piece of the circuit or even a particular physical geometry that's problematic. And what we see here is from the yellow bar for this data set, really the biggest problem is that this test data has a large number of metal three bridging. And this type of analysis though, is not as straightforward as we make it look on this slide. The reality is that the diagnostics data we load into Yield Explorer is fuzzy because the diagnostics engines can't always accurately triangulate failures. And complicating this further is there could be a lot of scan fails, even on just a few die. That makes sense. And Mark, this seems like a lot of data. How does Yield Explorer turn this into something useful? Yeah, you're correct. It's a lot of data. And the combination of high volume and noisy data make it really difficult to produce actionable information. So in Yield Explorer, we have built-in robust mechanisms to do a first-order filtering of the most useless data. And this is shown on this slide as our DART feature. And then after DART, we move to our ABD and FMA engines. And these are the statistical engines that extract the most meaningful systematic information. And so the Pareto we saw on the previous slide, for example, is a result of the FMA algorithm. And finally, we have our FAST feature that will find only the highest quality candidates for failure analysis. And this way, you increase your chances of finding a physical defect when you send a part to FA. Okay. Now, Mark, how does Yield Explorer connect the diagnostics data to the other data domains? Yeah, so so far I've focused on ATPG diagnostics, but Yield Explorer can also load BIST bitmap data as well as standard ATE test data. And ATE test data normally comes in the form of what we call an STDF file. And not only do we load all this into one database, but we also link it together on the back end for you. So this allows users to quickly move through different data domains on the same data scope. So as an example, you can compare standard cell fail rates from ATPG diagnostics to ring oscillator frequency from an STDF file. And this type of analysis would show you if your standard cell failures are caused by a parametric sensitivity. Okay, so comparing the automation of Yield Explorer versus a manual flow, I would imagine this would save us a lot of time overall. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, Yield Explorer is not the only solution for doing this type of work, but it is the only solution that does in a fully integrated manner. And we can see here on this slide as an example, this multi-tool manual flow. So historically, when you're going to try to find a low yielding lot, that's one tool. And then when you're going to look at failing cells from your diagnostics and then if put them on a Pareto and then a map, that's a diagnostics tool. And then maybe spatial trends, maybe you're gonna look at parametric data from STDF, that's yet another tool. Your failing cells and nets, well, maybe that would come from your previous diagnostic tool, but we're up to two or maybe three tools so far. And then to overlay the failing nets on layout to identify locations for PFA is yet another tool. And Yield Explorer allows you to do this entire flow start to finish in one integrated manner. And the feedback we get from our customers is this takes their old flow that would take them weeks. And then the Yield Explorer flow, it reduces their work to just several hours. Wow. Okay, Mark, let's talk about Silicon Dash. What are we really looking at here? So as we move into Silicon Dash, Silicon Dash is the synopsis, big data analytics reporting and production control solution for high volume manufacturing. So Silicon Dash differs from other tools in the space is that it's specifically architected for high volume production data. And the system stays responsive no matter the number of users or the amount of data in the database. It's built to allow users to correlate any data versus any other data without limitations on data size. And the goal is to ingest, 
and align data from across the manufacturing chain and then present it in a way that's easy to consume for a wide array of users. So engineers, quality, management, foundry partners, OSATs, designers, et cetera. Your entire worldwide team uses the same data in a standard way simultaneously to accelerate yield learning. Okay, so Mark, what does Silicon Dash buy me as an engineer? Yeah, so as we move from left to right at the top of this graphic, you can see that Silicon Dash can take data in from different parts of manufacturing and test. So this includes watt, bump, assembly, ATE, SLT from OSETs worldwide. And this gives you full traceability of every die through the entire chain. And as we move down the left side of the graphic, you can see that Silicon Dash does the heavy lifting so that your data is ready to use. It aligns your disparate data and prepares it so that the full slate of reports are at the ready, thereby eliminating all the time engineers spend manipulating data sets like we talked about at the beginning. This enables reporting and analysis that we see at the bottom. This reporting and analytics piece is orders of magnitude faster than traditional tools. And so what we see from our customers is that this drives more interactive analysis because the time investment for an engineer to investigate a problem is virtually nothing. And what I mean by this is, let's take an example of an engineer that's looking at a wafer map gallery of 200 wafers. And one of these 200 wafers has a different on wafer signature. Realistically, how much time is an engineer willing to spend to get the data ready to deep dive an issue knowing that it's only one of 200 wafers and that even after an investigation, they may not be able to root cause a problem. Now, if this takes an investment of one hour to prep your data set, okay, maybe the engineer spends an hour. What if it takes four, maybe eight hours to align and prep data sets? Well, then maybe not. So with Silicon Dash, everything is prepped and ready for you to take a look. So your investment is only one or two clicks in the tool. Additionally, Silicon Dash is looking at 100% of your data, like I mentioned previously, with our insights feature. Silicon Dash will drive you towards actionable information. And then finally, after ingesting and aligning your data, we move back up the right side of the graphing. So like I mentioned before, we can automatically process your data and then send those results to an external system. So not only can we do something like inking, but for example, we could also apply automated statistical bin limits and then put waivers on hold in your MES system. Cool. Now, Mark, what kind of insights can I gain from Silicon Dash? Yeah, this is one of my favorite parts of Silicon Dash. Out of the box, Silicon Dash is made to provide you with actionable information. You start loading your data and the insights show up immediately. And on this slide, we see five of our 40 or so insights. The system is automatically looking at your data for things like what to wafer sort correlation. It's looking for instances where a test parameter distribution is clipped by an upper or lower spec limit. One of my favorites is here with the wide test limit. So with wide test limits, we're looking for when you have parts that are outliers of the test distribution, but they're still passing because they're within your test limits. And we know from reliability studies, these anomalous parts are more susceptible to field failures than the general population. So maybe an action when you see a wide test limit would be to go back and tighten this limit to fail these parts at test to increase reliability in the field. And this is great for customers that have automotive or server parts where reliability is a huge concern. We also look for test equipment anomalies. So we can look for tester, load board, and probe card, even test sites that have statistically different yield on like material and notify you of those issues. Or in this case, we also see consecutive bin fails. So this is another case where you've got a piece of equipment that's returning the same failure no matter what part is inserted in the socket. So in the test equipment dependency or the consecutive bin fail example, these are both highlighting equipment that need to be taken offline for maintenance. To summarize Silicon Dash, it's easy to use and needs minimal setup and training. It's the only big data analytics solution that provides insights without additional setup. And since it's cloud-based, it's scalable to any number of simultaneous users worldwide. But really the power of Silicon Dash is better shown with a demo. This is Silicon Dash. Silicon Dash is a big data stream compute cloud-based software from Synopsys. It's used for reporting, analytics, and production control of high volume silicon test data. You access Silicon Dash through a web browser, which is nice because now your teams worldwide are all aligned on the data they're looking at and 
what the reports mean that they show. And Silicon Dash differs from other tools that the user doesn't pull discrete data sets. So all the reports are at the ready, which means that analysis is a very low investment for engineers. In the real world, this translates into more data exploration and then more yield learning. And the reason is that engineers aren't worried they're going to spend hours pulling together data and not reach an actionable conclusion. What we see in Silicon Dash is that you can usually reach some sort of action in two or three clicks. Today we're going to take a look at our demo platform. This is real customer data, but it's been obfuscated. As I navigate, I want you to see how quick it is to move through volumes of data. So to start, we're going to take a look at this wafer sort data here. And in this data set, we're looking at F10 lots, so 241 wafers. And we'll start out with our uh, yield reports, and specifically this hard bend trend chart. In this case, we're looking at yield, which is the black line, uh, lot to lot. And the colors would be the amount of hard bend fallout. So for example, this hard bend 8 is this purple, and it's almost 14% fallout. The charts are fully interactive. You can mouse over the legend. You can pin colors. You can deep dive a specific bin by clicking it on the legend. So in this case, I click hard bin 14. We go into a hard bin 14 drill down chart. Now, since this is a web browser, I'm just going to click back to go back where I was. You can also drill down if you think uh, this lot is interesting. I can just click on the chart directly. And now I've moved from an all scope. If you see, I move from all scope to lot scope now and just investigate this lot. I'm going to go back. So very quick to navigate, to drill down, to do that kind of peel the onion analysis very quickly. And you can also change the x-axis in almost all charts to a different type of data. So in this case, maybe I, instead of looking at all 10 lots, I want to see all 241 wafers, and I can choose wafer here. Moving on from hard bin trends, we have wafer maps. And since we have 241 wafers, in this data set, we'd expect to see 241 wafer maps in this gallery. Again, fully interactive, so if you see an interesting wafer like this one with this kind of strange pattern here, click the wafer, go directly now into a wafer scope, investigate further. I'm going to go back. We also have hard bend Paredos, stacked hard bend maps, fully interactive. So as I mouse over the colors, they highlight on the map, and you can pin. So for example, I'm going to pin this hard bend 8, and you see a clear outer edge pattern for hard bend 8. And this distribution chart, which shows you for the top failing bins, you're seeing per wafer what the bin percentage is for the various bins. So for example, what it shows you here is that this wafer 12 has the most hard bin 8 fails. And if I were to click this dot, it takes me again into a wafer scope, and I can see the large number of hard bin 8 fails on this wafer. I'm going to go back. So these are the hard bin reports. We have soft bin reports as well. The soft bin reports, exact same reporting and navigation. It's just soft bin instead of hard bin data. Retest test time reports. I'm not going to go through all of them, but some of my favorites here. Oops, I'm going to change this from soft bin to hard bin here. Let's change the bins. And two, two reports in here I really like. One is yield trend. I can check my first pass yield versus my merge yield, and the delta between the two is recovery rate. And I also like the recovery Pareto. So for example, first pass testing had over 5,000 failures for hard bin 20. But on retest, over 3,000 of these recover. So you see them, you see this hard bin 20 with this white bar, meaning that they recovered to passing. There's still a large number, though, that stayed hard bin 20, which is this orange bar. Go to some of our parametric reports. Parametric reports, we have things like this fail Pareto. So when a test fails, which bin does it contribute to? So for example, this calibration test 1, res 7, it fails, it goes to bin 14. And if you want to investigate further, again, fully interactive. You just click the parameter name. It takes you right down into a parametric drill down report to investigate just this parameter by itself. Going to go back. We also have CPCPK. The green bar is CPK, and this kind of outline bar is CP. And again, all your tests, you can scroll through very quickly, see if there's something strange that you would investigate. You could click the parameter and deep dive. We have parameters versus limits. In this chart, we're taking your lower spec limit, setting it at minus 1. We take your upper spec limit, set it at 1, and then we scale your measured data accordingly. 
And as you scroll down, you can compare, um, you know, test to test. You can compare the distributions versus their limits, see if anything looks strange or interesting. So for example, you can see like this is an outlier here. This test has a large flyer. It's auto-scaling the report. Um, you know, maybe you expect ID, ID to Q test 18 and 19 to be similar, but clearly they're not. The distributions look different, and they're uh, biased towards different sides of the limit. We also have wafer map gallery, so we have stack parameter maps. So again, in this gallery, we expect to see 241 wafers. Now we have, looks like a little over 1,600 parameters in this data set. So you would actually see, yeah, 1,600, over 1,600 wafer maps in this gallery, and every single wafer is a stack of all 241 wafers. So very quickly, you can see for each parameter if there's any kind of nice on wafer patterns. And clearly, these have a clear on wafer pattern. You're seeing here on this this test here this kind of frowny face pattern, which is indicative of a probe card issue. So my guess is this test is uh, sensitive to the probe site. And again, very quick to navigate through and to look at all your parameters. You can also look at the stack fail maps. So when these parameters fail, what does that look like on the wafer? And it's interesting here. So some of these tests look like there's a little cluster of failures here. So again, fully interactive, I would maybe click those parameter and see if it's a particular lot or particular wafers where this occurs. Parameter trends, the parameter data per parameter, but this case, a box plot per lot. So quickly you can see, so it looks like we have some kind of flyer here on this lot. And you can quickly scroll and compare uh, the distribution trends. We also have distribution plots. If you would prefer to look at the data this way, your standard distribution plot. One thing that's nice, I'm going to drill down into this one. You can also do real-time modeling with these distribution plots. So for example, we have this test limit way out here. And the question is, well, if I pulled it over to here, so maybe, you know, the, we consider these parts reliability issues. I want to make sure I filter those out at wafer sort, but what would my yield look like? In this case, I'm going to grab this, I'm going to pull it in and say, well, you know, if I move my limit here, I would only pick up five failures. And this is, so this is real-time modeling, and we're looking at over a quarter million parts in this data set. So, you know, for a quarter million parts, I would pick up five failures, so I'm looking at what, um, 20 parts per million, uh, you know, so maybe for an enhanced reliability, you would want to make that choice. Like I said, you can do this real time. In Silicon Dash, I'm going to go back. And we have functional reports as well. So for your pass fail test, scan test, maybe functional test, this test, things like that. And same thing, when a test fails, what bin does it contribute to? One thing that's nice in here, uh, and wafer galleries, of course, but if I were to deep dive to a drill down for a specific failing test, if you're collecting the first failing cycle and the first failing pin data, you can see those as Pareto's in here. And you can also see it as a combination cycle, pin fail table as well. So that's nice when you're trying to deep dive something like a failing scan test. I'm going to go back out to where we started the Silicon Dash dashboard. Now I'm going to look at final test data instead of wafer sort, but I'm going to look at ESID data, which means we have a chip ID recorded. And when I go to this final test data, what we're going to do is we're going to group package failures, but we're going to group them by their wafer sort lot which allows you to do cool things like this. These are final test failures, but we're seeing them on a wafer map. And that's because we have the chip ID, we know where the part came from. So all the same reporting that we saw previously at wafer sort we have for final test. And one thing we haven't talked about yet is under the summary tab, and these are our insights. So our stream compute engine is looking at 100% of your data for you. And the results of that shown on this summary tab. What we're trying to do with Silicon Dash is find things in your data that are statistically relevant and actionable. So we have some kind of um, like test hardware issues. We look for some process issues. In this case, integrity, right? So we have, your, we have passing parts at final tests that were retested. That shouldn't happen. Um, why test limits, test limit sensitivity, the one I want to look at today is watt correlation. So remember, this is final test data. But the insights feature is telling us there is a watt parameter that can predict a failure at final test. So this is great, because if I know this, this is something I can take back to the fab. And also, maybe I can set tighter limits so I never have to throw away these, these packages. 
So let's take a look. It's fully interactive. I'm going to click the highlight. So it took us directly to a hard bin 8. And then we can see over here on the right side, it's telling us there are what parameters, it looks like there's several, that can predict a hard bin 8 failure. And to investigate further, I can just click to drill down. And now it's giving me a scatter plot. So it's telling me this test 294 at watt can predict a failure of hard bin 8 at, at final test. And you're seeing that, right? You're seeing as what I'm assuming this is some kind of bit cell leakage from the units. As this increases, the fallout, the fallout's increasing. We can even like zoom in here to kind of see that relationship a little bit better. So today we've taken a look at some of the basic reporting and analytics features of Silicon Dash. This will conclude the demo. Thank you for watching. All right, Mark. So if my audience wants to check out Silicon Dash for themselves, what do you have for them? Yeah, you can email us at slm at synopsis.com if you want to get a hands-on workshop with Silicon Dash. Excellent. That sounds great. All right, Mark. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. This was great. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Synopsis. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>